Namaskaram. Good morning, Namaskaram. good afternoon, good evening to all the viewers around the world. We have a very special guest today. I was born in the late 80s. It would not be an exaggeration if I say Tamil household during the 90s would not go to sleep without listening to Srimati Shobana Ravi's news. Srimati Shobana Ravi, vanakkam, welcome to our show. Vanakkam, vanakkam. Solal Vallan, Sor Vilan. Looks like you are a Mori Vallan. Mother tongue Telugu. Oh, I am not. I don't know about that. Uh, well, uh, though a Telugu, I was born and brought up in Chennai. I studied Tamil. My school teachers groomed me in such a way that uh, uh, they taught me how to uh, mouth my words, how to look at the audience, the way I carried myself and how I had to deliver my dialogues because I was selected to act in many plays in the school. I don't think anybody else would have had that intense a training. Uh, the headmistress, Sister Virginia, and the teachers knew Tamil well. They enjoyed putting up plays and were absolutely dedicated in what they did. Those times in Chennai, then Madras, were unsullied by political and religious narratives. Great. Uh, retired in 2006. How was your yeah. journey in your darshan? I took my voluntary retirement in 2006 and uh, as I was already bored with my job, uh, I had been doing it for nearly 30 years then. Uh, I was doing very well as a grade one employee of the central government, so I did not think of uh, moving out of Doordarshan. My journey in Doordarshan was smooth, though I was catapulted to fame. I had ample time to pursue my other interests as well. I was looking for spiritual clarity that would take me beyond religions. That was when I met my spiritual master, who blessed me with an understanding of myself. That rounded me up as a person. So my job was only a part of my life, but I gave my best when I was at it. Great. You have written a lot. Uh, your collection of poems, The Cat List, The Auspicious, and now Amaru. So how do you describe yeah. your personal journey in writing? Well, I have been writing both in English and Tamil uh, since I was, say, 13 or 14. But I never thought of publishing them then. Uh, I co-edited a student uh, magazine called uh, Manavarism. Uh, I did content editing in Tamil and English manuscripts. Then I wrote and uh, tuned some lyrics in both Tamil and English. Uh, my husband, Vanavil K. Ravi, a senior advocate, is a repository of knowledge where it concerns law, literature and philosophy. He's a prolific writer and a poet too. I have drawn much inspiration from him as a writer. I have been writing and uh, this, uh, the two novels that I have written, I did not, I had not planned writing a novel because uh, I was not sure if I would have that kind of patience. I was at home and I was feeling bored. Uh, so I thought I will start writing something. And it, it, as I was writing, it looked like it was going to be a long piece of, say, a, a novel or a novelette. As I wrote, uh, I was showing it to my my uh, friends and my relatives, and uh, I did get a good feedback. So I completed the novel, the first one, the auspicious, in six months' time exactly. I was quite uh, surprised that I could do it. Then after that, uh, that that got published, and then I chanced upon this uh, Amaru Satakam. Of course, I have I have read. Uh, since I told you that I, I am interested in spiritual matters, mm. I have read about Shankara, Adi Shankara. And so uh, when I read Amaru Satakam, which is said to be uh, written by the person who was the Kshetra for uh, Adi Shankara's spirit, when I read those poems, then I, I was inspired to write this novel. Amaru. And uh, so here I am. I have been writing many poems also, uh, both in English and in and some in Tamil. Not many in Tamil though. You seem to have found your spiritual journey. You were already reading and researching about Adi Shankaranda's works and that brought the idea of Amaru, your latest book. So 
tell us briefly about this book what is this about we have all uh, many of us have read about shankara uh, we know that uh, he had uh, a conversation of vada uh, with uh, mandana mishra that his wife ubaya bharati said that uh, unless you know the difficulties of a householder you cannot call yourself wise so you lack in one one aspect of life one big aspect of life so shankara had no answer for that he understood that what she said was right uh, so he he asked for some time he said uh, i'll come back with to you uh, and continue this this debate by then i would have attained enough knowledge on what you say i lack but uh, nobody thought that he would be able to do it but shankara uh, wanted to establish his advaita because buddhism was very rapidly spreading he decides that and he tells his uh, disciples that he would transmigrate to another physical form to another physical body and experience what he lacks in and then come back to his body and continue his debate with uh, ubay bharati so uh, this is the story uh, and uh, since i came to know of this amaru chatakam i thought uh, i that would fill up the gaps of uh, uh, the narrative in shankara's life so uh, that is how i put both together shankara's life and amaru chatakam and i brought in uh, kashmir king uh, because uh, shankara writes saundarya lakari in uh, uh, kashmir he writes it in what we now call the uh, shankara hill uh, gopadri so uh, i thought i will have the whole uh, scene set in kashmir so that is how my uh, amaru happened shankara's advaita arrested my mind from jumping from one philosophical theory to another when i read about his short life and uh, his achievements i could sense his greatness but that was long back but it was only recently that i uh, came to know about amaru satakam which is believed to be written by the king who uh, to into this whose body shankara uh, transmigrated the purpose of the book if you may ask what it is uh, it is only to share this inspiration with people who are looking for truth as a novelist i have tried to give the readers what i would have looked for when i chose a book to read amaru makes for a pretty racy reading i think that's what people say great uh, we have not read this book we are seriously looking forward uh, to read this book indeed great so adi shankara had to get into the body of a king to understand grahastha ashrama so that he can debate with uh, vishwarupa mandana mishra's wife and uh, adi shankara was a sanyasi do you think the current generation uh, should learn about this grahastha ashrama what is your opinion about educating kids about family and its values today grahastha ashrama as we call it uh, a householder's life is always uh, relevant whether one wants to go into the institution of marriage or not he will still be living with people or uh, the coexistence itself requires some kind of adjustment and compromises so uh, educating kids about family and its values uh, the family may not be the same as it used to be uh, uh, 500 years ago or even 200 years ago or even 100 years ago 50 years ago but still uh we coexist and uh, whatever the friends and the and the close re- relationships we have you can call it a family uh, it may not be a misnomer to call is to say that uh, uh, i am when somebody someone is in a relationship uh, you that also is in a certain way a family it can be called a family so uh, that being the case uh, children to know of families yeah now they only know of broken families mostly they are uh, single parented but all that even uh, at present i don't think it is completely possible to go back to that era of uh, uh, tight family relationships we have to teach children the value of uh, interrelationships and uh, 
it is also instead of teaching how we live our lives will be imbibed by the children we bring up isn't it indeed uh, having said that uh, what will be the key takeaway for your readers i think amaru is sure to transport the readers to the pure zone of wisdom after taking them in a roller coaster ride through the tumultuous interplay of emotions emotions both strong and weak there is a lot of sensuousness in amaru sensuousness is the outcome of soulful love it is about giving even while taking in sensuous love taking does not diminish awareness erotic is carnal love that is how i see it i think uh, where there is no wisdom the soul is buried deep and where there is no wisdom pure love is not possible since uh, vajraditya who is who embodies shankara's spirit is the protagonist of amaru this sensuous love sensuousness is being expressed by all the characters that come in contact with my hero vajraditya oh, that's beautiful so auspicious amaru what's next will it be in tamil no i don't know uh, i don't even know whether i'm going to write a third one but uh, the first uh, the auspicious only the first part of auspicious has been published so there is part 2 of auspicious i would uh, like to take take that up next but otherwise i am still i still don't have any uh, very inspiring plot that would set me writing so let us see great uh, looking forward to read auspicious and amaru and also your next book on auspicious srimadi um, shobana ravi avargalitta tamil la kelvi kekkalana nalla irukadu so what do you think about uh, tamil ucharippu in these days what would be your advice to improve tamil ucharippu or 30 varshathukku munnadi irundha maadhiri ipo illa la la moonu la 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 adala illa ipo ella ore adhu mudinja thappa லா இருக்கிற இடத்துல லா சொல்லணும் லா இருக்கிற இடத்துல லா சொல்லணும் லா வரவே வராது தமிழ் டீச்சர்ஸ் தெம் செல்ஸ் ஆர் நாட் ட்ரெயின்ட் இன் தமிழ் ப்ரொனன்சியேஷன் அண்ட் கிராமர் சோ த சுச்சுவேஷன் ஹியர் இஸ் குவைட் பேட் அண்ட் ஐ கான் திங்க் ஆஃப் அன் அட்வைஸ் டு பிரிங் பேக் தமிழ் டு இட்ஸ் கிறிஸ்டீன் ஸ்டேட் இஃப் தி பொலிட்டிக்கல் சினாரியோ சேஞ்சஸ் இன் டென் இயர்ஸ் தமிழ் கேன் பி ரிவைவ்ட் ஐ ஃபீல் in the present educational setup it will only deteriorate further this year this is for your information this year you must be knowing of that this year in tamil nadu in the 12th board exam about 50000 students were absent for tamil exams so that speaks for the way tamil is going from bad to worse as a language தமிழ் இனி மெல்ல சாகும்னு பாரதி வருத்தப்பட்ட மாதிரி நடந்துட்டு இருக்கு நினைக்கிறேன் அப்பவே அப்ப இருந்த தமிழுக்கே அவர் அப்படி வருத்தப்பட்டு இருக்காருன்னா இப்ப வந்து செத்து போச்சுன்னு சொல்லிடுவார் கொஞ்சம் பேர் இருக்காங்க பட் மோஸ்ட்லி இட் இஸ் வெரி பேட் அது வேதனைக்குரிய விஷயம்தான் பேச்சு வழக்கு தமிழே வந்து தமிழா இல்லாம ஒரு தங்கிலீஷ் மாதிரிதான் இருக்கு அதாவது வடமொழிக்காக கூடாது ஆனா மேற்கு மொழி கலக்கலாம் மேற்கு மொழி போய் அது வந்து ஒரு இட் இஸ் குவைட் நேச்சுரல் இல்ல ரெண்டு லாங்குவேஜ் வந்து சைட் பை சைடு இருக்கும் போது ஒன்னு ஒண்ணு இன்ஃபுளுன்ஸ் பண்ணதான் செய்யும் சோ இப்ப இங்க எப்படி ஆயிடுச்சுன்னா தமிழும் முழுசா வரல இங்கிலீஷும் முழுசா வரல அப்ப ரெண்டும் இதுல கொஞ்சம் வேர்ட்ஸ் அது இப்ப நானே சொல்றேன் பாருங்களேன் வேர்ட்ஸ்ங்கிற இதுல சில வார்த்தைகள் அதுல சில வார்த்தைகள்னு எடுத்து I think it is a natural process. All languages are like that, right? So, Malayalam is the same as Tamil, Samaskrit, Kalandh, and the same as the same with Telugu also. Of course, different proportions. But otherwise, uh, it is bound to happen, I think. Hmm. Okay, great. You are very happy. 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 அது நல்லா பதியும் நினைக்கிறேன் வாசகர்களுக்கு ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் டூ ரைட் மோர் அண்ட் ஐ ரியலி விஷ் அ பெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் லக் ஃபார் யுவர் கரண்ட் வெஞ்சர் இட் இஸ் அமரு 
I also request the readers to look at our description for the coupon code and you can get it from uh, the Garuda books online. Thank you, Subramanian. Thank you. Thanks a lot so much once again, uh, Thirumadhi Shobhana Ravi. Thanks for coming to our show. Thank you.